Welcome to Future Bank Today. This is your host, Jim Kittredge. Last week we covered the first of two innovations that I believe will have the most significant impact on the financial industry over the next several years. However, today we're going to take a slight detour. Today we're going to talk about what I believe is the most significant innovation that has come about in the last 50 years. Its potential is greater than any words that I can attest to it. What is it? It's DNA with something called CRISPR-Cas9. I think its potential is greater than any words that I could test to it. Its impact over the next decades is nearly unfathomable. Does it affect banking? Well, I'm not sure it directly affects it, but its potential is almost astounding. It could reorient our economy, our human lifespan, our capabilities, how we address disease, and even what we eat for dinner every night. I think the best way to understand this would be first to use a near-perfect analogy, electricity. In 1752, Ben Franklin conducted his famous experiment. We all know it. The kite, a key, and a thunderstorm. And voila, he discovers electricity. Yet it wasn't until 80 years later, in 1831, that it became viable for use in technology when a man named Michael Faraday created the electric dynamo, which was really just a crude power generator. It wasn't until a full 50 years later, in 1878, that Thomas Edison and British scientist Joseph Swan each invented, independently by the way, the incandescent filament light bulb, producing the first practical light bulb in use for electricity. This was the tipping point of the modern industrial revolution. Now, let's talk about DNA. What is DNA? Well, DNA is a molecule that carries most of the genetic instructions used in the development, functioning, and reproduction of all known living organisms. We know it mostly by its two biopolymer strands coiled around each other to form the famous double helix. It was discovered in 1953 by James Watson and Francis Crick, much like Ben Franklin discovered electricity. The first DNA sequences were obtained in the early 1970s by several academic researchers using a laborious method of two-dimensional chromatography. The first fully sequenced DNA genome was of a simple bacteria, and this was completed in 1977. An international research project in 1990 was organized to map out the human genome, all three billion of them. It was funded by Congress and it leveraged over 20 universities and research centers across the world. By 2001, a mere 11 years later, it was completed and it cost a staggering $2.75 billion to complete. By the way, today, we can have that same advanced sequencing could be done for less than $1,000. I guess that says a little bit about our government and some of its programs. With the completion of the mapping of the human genome, the media went into a frenzy. They predicted in a few short years we would revolutionize everything from medicine to our environment. There was even talk of designer babies, of extending human life to 150 years, it went on and on. It made the headlines and magazine covers of every major publication. Once again, this was another great example of the hype curve, and we were clearly climbing that hype curve. So why didn't these things happen? Well, there was a dirty little secret not shared amongst all the enthusiasm. Reading the DNA was only half the challenge. Editing it, that is, changing a specific gene was near impossible, and to do so cost several million dollars to accomplish. The tools we had were akin to putting out a candle on a birthday cake with a fire hose. Yes, the candle went out, but it also destroyed the whole cake. And you could just forget about trying to put out one of a hundred candles on that cake with that same fire hose. It was expensive, cumbersome, and incredibly inaccurate. Yes, we discovered electricity like Franklin, but we couldn't do anything with it, at least not yet. 
Let's fast forward to 2014. In 2014, multiple academic scientists across two universities simultaneously discovered something called CRISPR-Cas9. CRISPR is the abbreviation for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. I kind of like the word CRISPR better myself. And Cas9 is a type of protein. Now, I don't think I could do justice to a technical discussion on exactly how CRISPR and Cas9 works. But suffice to say, simply put, CRISPR acts as a pair of DNA scissors, allowing it to very specifically snip out and replace any specific portion of a genome. Cas9 is a protein in the CRISPR system that literally rides along the DNA strands, unzipping them, looking for an exact sequence match that the scientist has requested. Now, for the first time, any scientist can inexpensively edit with great accuracy a genome. How inexpensive? How about $30 per sequence? We've gone from millions of dollars with an inaccurate tool to $30 with a highly accurate tool. Now, hundreds of millions of dollars in a short two years have been poured into this space. In 2015, the first human embryo genome was edited successfully, and the world as we know it will never be the same. This is truly equivalent to Faraday inventing the electric generator. Now we await the scientists who are quickly working on practical applications of this incredibly powerful technology. What does this have to do with the future banking? I don't know. I only know this new technology will affect our lives in numerous ways. Some good, and some sadly, probably not so good. As a post note, there's a couple good lessons for all innovators in this. One, often the invention of a technology proceeds by a period of time before its practical use, which is more often than not completed by another party. It's also a great reason to patent your, your innovations at the earliest point. And also, what you're working on, I know you think it's unique, but likely someone simultaneously is doing the same thing. Thank you for your time today.